But these foolish people in the past who were misled by the shaitan and who tried to merge and morph the teachings of the Neoplatonists and the Gnostics and so on and so forth, those people who said that the path to salvation relied in inner knowledge. يُحَدِّثُنِي قَلْبِ عَنْ رَبِّي That my heart tells me about my Lord. My heart will guide me. My heart will guide me to the best ways to discipline myself and so on and so forth. And he people who took a impractical approach to the religion, thinking that a person has to completely change himself as opposed to what Islam comes with, of a person using his weaknesses and turning them into strengths. A person can have a quality that could be a good quality, the shaitan can use it against him. He could have a quality that's a bad quality, that's a weakness, and he could turn it into a strength. A person could be a coward, for example. And so that makes him shy and apprehensive of people. That could be a strength for a person. It could be a strength for a person if he switches it around, and he makes himself a person who, and he اعتزل عن الشر, and he a person who withholds and secludes himself from evil and from fitna, and so on and so forth. A person can have courage and audacity and so on and so forth, and the shaitan could make him a warrior against the truth. The shaitan is ذئب insan, is the wolf on the human being. He smells out a person's strengths and his vulnerabilities and uses them against them. He uses his strengths against him, he uses his weaknesses against them. The religion that came to refine whatever a person has within himself. He doesn't have to transform who he is, he just has to. As Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned a parable, and you have people who heard that a flood was that a flood was racing towards a town. And so some people they thought that the way to curb the flood water from destroying the town was to build an enormous wall. So what happened? The flood water got higher and higher and higher to the point it eventually went over the wall. The second group of people, they said, what we're going to do is taqwiyatul mudun. We're going to take these qura and these mudun that are in the path and the course of the flood, we're going to take the towns and the villages and we're going to reinforce them, we're going to make the buildings solid, and so on and so forth. Eventually, the buildings collapsed and they gave way. The third group of people, this is the parable of what Ibn Qayyim, he said, he mentioned this to Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala, فَاسْتَحْسَنَ وَأَثْنَ عَنَا قَائِلِهِ And he said that this is a beautiful parable about what? Jarayan and nafs but the qualities within the nafs, right? It says of trying to stop and put up a, 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 a shield and a wall between your impulses and your desires and so on and so forth. And it says of just trying to reinforce yourself and strengthen yourself to fight against your impulses, you have to learn how to use those things to your own good. How to find the teachings in the religion and say that these are the things that are my strengths and these are the things that are my, that are my weaknesses. He said the third group of people were the uqana, the people of intelligence and understanding. What did they do? They, they dug uh, uh, canals and they irrigated the water to places where it would benefit the people, where they could drink from it and benefit from it and so on and so forth. And the person he says you can't stop human nature. You can't stop how people are. People are the way that they are. But you can redirect your impulses to something that is beneficial. A person can't stop, a person can't, if a person is a nerd, right? And they like to read and they like to be by themselves and they don't enjoy the company of other people, you can't make that person be security for the masjid, right? Go take this vest and stand out there and if anybody looks like they want to start some trouble, you give them the business. <laughs> He's not that person. And the person who is that person isn't the person that you say, I can come in the masjid and study fiqh principles and usul fiqh with me, and study and nahu wa sarf with me, right? And that person is going to be snoring, he's going to be sawing logs in the corner, right? Because that's not who he is. That's not who he is. And so a person, they look at their strengths and they look at their weaknesses and they know that the basis of rectifying the soul and the basis of learning and understanding who they are is to know who Allah is. As Ibn Uqayyim, he said that some of the scholars and they said, in the past they said, مَن لَا يَعْرِفُ رَبَّهُ لَا يَعْرِفُ نَفْسَهُ Now whoever doesn't know his Lord will not know his own self. 
You don't have the basis to understanding reality. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ الْلَطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ Doesn't the one who created us know better about us? And he is the one who is subtle in his knowledge, who has intricate, detailed uh, awareness of all things. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent this religion with that which would repair our conditions and so on and so forth.